Hi, you've clicked on to today's tidbit for Thursday, and this is going to be mostly about the winter again, but we are going to start with a brief look at the tropics here. This is the Indian Ocean, which has been pretty active of late. It's now the Southern Hemisphere tropical season, but we did have a cyclone develop of hurricane force here in the Bay of Bengal earlier and moved into Southern India a week or so ago, and that caused some big problems for them. That is now gone. We've had some activity down here. These are the remains of tropical cyclone Benilda, I believe that's her name, and we have a new low coming off of Africa, which is now trying to move and develop quickly into a low pressure center as it moves towards Madagascar. That'll bring some heavy rain to them. And in general, the space has been pretty active because of how warm the waters have been, abnor abnormally so for a second year La Nina winter. Most of the convection right now, though, is starting to move off towards the east across the equatorial region as the MJO starts moving eastward and drags most of the activity with it. But this basin is remaining fairly upbeat here in terms of the tropical season as we move forward. And now we're going to move into the winter for the rest of this video. First of all, these are the temperature anomalies uh, analyzed by the Climate Prediction Center for December. Notice how warm it was in the east here, and most of the forecast for December had a lot of cold digging into the eastern United States here and the Midwest, and I opined that it should probably be warmer than normal for most of the eastern seaboard, and that seems to have verified pretty nicely here, and we'll see if this continues through the rest of the winter as forecasts are still calling for a lot of cold to come down due to something that's happening in the stratosphere. We're calling it a, it's called a stratospheric warming event and uh, this is what the European is forecasting at the 10 millibar level way up in the stratosphere for day 15 very warm this is actually pretty incredible here 30 to 40 degrees Celsius above normal at the North Pole and this would be a major event and the reason why we get excited about these is because the warming in the stratosphere can sometimes work its way down into the troposphere and develop blocking over the Arctic and that would force cold air down into the United States and other continental areas um, causing cold weather and snowy conditions for lots of the eastern United States and this does happen and we're gonna look at these now what I decided to do is to look at what these stratospheric warming events do to the United States during strong Enzo events in other words El Nino winters and La Nina winters I'm going to leave neutral out here because there is going to be a point to the end of this uh, that we need to consider we're going to first look at El Nino winters. We're going to look at uh, these events at the 10 millibar level and see the warm temperatures. And then we're going to go down to the troposphere of 500 millibars and look at the height anomalies during the period when that specific warming event affected the troposphere the most and see what happened. We're going to start off with 2010 here. Big warming event over the pole. Most of you will remember this if you're weather nuts like me. This really warmed up at the pole January 20th to February 10th. We go down to 500 millibars and look at that blocking right over the pole and then the, the trough down here just incredible it, it's a textbook pattern it's a weather it's a weather lover snow lover pattern here was a major part of the big winter that we obviously had in 2009 2010 we go back to 2005 that's our next El Nino winter in line big warming event in the stratosphere here we go down to 500 millibars and again big cold and big troughing here underneath the block over Greenland for the eastern United States we go to 2003 again very warm in the stratosphere we go down to the troposphere again troughing over the east and generally cold pattern underneath the blocking over the Arctic. We go to 1995 now and again very warm in the stratosphere you can see the event there and then again troughing showing up in the each United States you can see the theme that's developing here. 1992 warm event in the stratosphere and uh, we have the cold coming in mostly into the northeast quadrant of the country not so much down here in the southeast and Gulf Coast states but generally cold in New England and the northern sea northern eastern seaboard here during mid-January. We go to 1987, and uh, January into mid-February, we had a big warming event over the pole. We go down to the troposphere, and from mid-January through the end of February, we had, again, cold developing along the eastern seaboard underneath blocking over Canada and Greenland. 1983 is our final year now, and uh, we have, again, a big warming event in the stratosphere, and down in the troposphere, we have troughing, generally cold down in the southern part of the United States, warm over New England because of the blocking that is far enough south here, but generally cold conditions with the troughing underneath of that block. And that is our last El Nino winter before we reach the beginning of the satellite era in 1979, before which we don't have very great observations of the stratosphere, so I won't go any farther and bore you with all those years. Now, though, we're going to go into the La Nina winters. Uh, where we had stratospheric warming events during La Nina events and see what happens here. 
I'm going to start off at 2009 now. This was the most recent, January 20th through 30th. Very warm in the stratosphere. You can see here, this was a particularly warm event, over 40 Celsius over Greenland above normal. We go down to the troposphere, and it's actually pretty neutral over here in the eastern United States. Warm in the plains. The trough is out here, and it's actually generally normal temperatures for the eastern United States, despite the blocking over the North Pole here. We go just one year earlier, 2008, very warm over the pole here in the stratosphere. We go down to 500 millibars. And it's actually pretty warm for the eastern seaboard. We do have a jab of cold coming down into the Midwest here. And this was a nasty period for the plains and uh, the Midwest states. But this actually was pretty warm in general for the eastern seaboard on the eastern side of this trough with that ridge over the southeast still flexing its muscle down there. 2006, most people think of this as an El Nino year, but it was actually a weak La Nina during the winter portion of the year. We had a big warming event directly over the North Pole. We go down to the lower levels, and it's actually blowtorch warm over here for the central part of the country eastward all the way to the seaboard with the troughing all the way back over Alaska, which is a very cold PDO pattern. And seemingly, the stratospheric warming event here had no real effect on putting cold into North America. Going down to 2001, now big warming event in the stratosphere. We go down to the troposphere. And we do have a jab of cold trying to come out of southern Canada underneath this Greenland block. But notice the southeast ridge is still sitting down here with a generally zonal flow here. And it was actually fairly warm up to I-70 here with most of the cold confining itself to New England and the Great Lakes. Here's 1999, very warm in the stratosphere, which is we know that now, and down in the troposphere. This is actually one of the cold events here in the east with warmth confined to the plains, but uh, underneath this block here over Greenland, we had very cold weather for the eastern seaboard. 1989, another La Nina, very warm in the stratosphere, and uh, in the troposphere, again, actually blowtorch warm here for most of the country with the Arctic vortex actually fairly intact here over Greenland, allowing that zonal flow and very warm temperatures. And finally, we have 1985, and boy, this was a big event. This was a stratospheric warming event similar to 2010 where the entire atmospheric column from the surface all, all the way up to the one millibar level um, just completely warmed up the arctic vortex completely gone and so we get the same kind of pattern complete blocking over the pole and then the monster trough just textbook oh, you just gotta love these winter patterns when they come around they don't come around very often but this one in 2010 were like this so What's the point here? Well, look at all these La Nina years. We were looking at this. This 1985 here and 1989 were the only two out of this entire set I just showed you that actually allowed cold into the eastern United States here. All the rest of these were actually fairly warm in general for the United States in the eastern part of the country. And uh, yet they were all stratospheric warming events. You can see all these big bombs over the pole at 10 millibars, and we're like, yay, cold is coming into North America. It doesn't always happen, though. And uh, it can actually backfire on you quite a bit. Like in 1989 here, you can see the blowtorch warm for most of the country. It's because. A, these events don't always come down into the troposphere. So even if we're forecasting a whole bunch of warming in the stratosphere, it doesn't always come down. It doesn't always affect the troposphere. And then B, even if it does, it won't always do what you're hoping it's going to do and form all the blocking up here and send all the cold air down here. Because guess what? There are other places to send the cold air. You can send it into Africa, and you can send it into Asia. No problem. It can go there instead. And what we're seeing here is the fact that the La Nina winters are the ones that tend to resist cold in the eastern United States, it's showing us that the La Nina signal and the cold PDO signal can generally give us the troughing out here in the Gulf of Alaska and allow the ridging to remain strong over the eastern part of the United States despite the warming in the stratosphere and actually resist the cold coming in and the blocking developing over southeast Canada. So it's not always a guarantee for cold, and it's showing us that we need to look at the other things that are going on. If we have a cold PDO and a La Nina, we're going to get a pattern that tends to fight the stratosphere and any influence on the troposphere may not give you the cold that you're looking for. And this year, of course, is a La Nina winter. And therefore, it's going to be harder to actually get full-blown cold in the East United States like we're hoping for, like we've had for the last couple of winters. And that's what I wanted to point out in this video here. 
um, is that we're going to have to just wait and see uh, for the next couple of days, see if this forecast here from the European actually works its way to the troposphere. And if it does, what it's going to set up, again, just a negative AO isn't going to guarantee us cold in the eastern United States. There's plenty of examples of having blocking up here, but the trough doesn't set up down here because of other things that are going on upstream that set up in the Pacific and allow the jet stream to lift up here and keep the warmth over the east. So we're going to have to watch. But this is going to become quite a battle ground because as we develop some blocking up here like the GFS and CFS have been showing we're going to be throwing cold air down towards southern Canada and start to cool down perhaps this area in the Midwest and the northern plains could get some more cold weather they've been warm so far we might see some cold develop there and get a battleground between warmth that's trying to hang on in the southeast and cold trying to come down from the north so this is going to get interesting moving forward here but again my forecast was for a fairly cold winter in these areas overall and I think that overall the east Eastern seaboard and southeast will remain normal to slightly above normal for the rest of the winter overall, though some cold shots are definitely going to come through from time to time as we have recently had. It was freezing down through Florida just a couple of nights ago. So winter's not without its cold shots, but I think overall this will be a warmer winter than was forecasted by most at the beginning of this season. And of course we will see how this all comes together so we can tie it into the Atlantic hurricane season, uh, which we will all be looking forward to in about uh, five, six months now. Still a long way away, but we have the winter to look forward to for all of us weather nuts. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.